morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yori Folani. And my guest this morning, he's uh, well known to us actually, that is, um, I think, well, in Lagos, and when we, back in the day when he used to talk about Lagos State Affairs, because then he was a commissioner in Lagos State, but um, he's moved to the federal level now, and I'm talking about Comrade Kaladi Okwefa. Uh, Comrade Okwefa is executive vice chair of the presidential task force. No, I, always, I keep on saying task force, but actually is the presidential task team on restoration of law and order uh, in Apapa, in the Apapa axis, right? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Now, good morning to you. Good, and good thank morning, you for Mr. joining us. And um, I have from having been talking with you before coming on here, I know you're a bit, you're a bit more well disposed to that particular uh, description of um, the assignment, uh, ra other than uh, rather than um, clearing the port, Apapa port congestion. Um, now, I, I want to find out. What is the difference? Because as far as we were concerned, back in May, when the announcement came that the president had directed that a task team needs to go clear the gridlock um, within two weeks, well, people were saying that federal might can do anything once it sets its mind to it. It's been an age-old problem. Uh, now, these guys that are saddled with this job, vice president and you, your very good self, um, Vice President acting as the chairman and your very good self asking, acting as the uh, vice chair. Um, we want to see how they're going to achieve it in two weeks. And you didn't achieve it in two weeks. That is to say, the gridlock continued. Um, but at this stage, let me pause and seek perspective. Did you achieve, because you were to say subsequently by way of explanation that people are misunderstanding the assignment we had. It was to go in there and provide an enabling environment. Not like magic that there wouldn't be any gridlock anymore. How say you, sir? Uh, good morning. Good morning. Uh, uh, um, let me thank you and thank TVC for the interest TVC had shown in following up on the EU. In fact, uh, TVC will rank among the top two um, media houses that have been present in uh, Ababa, monitoring the situation even before we moved in. Now, um, you have also made so many documentaries and uh, reports mm -hmm. on this issue in the last uh, uh, two, three months that I'm aware of. I'm, I'm, I'm sure almost one every two weeks. And um, let me see, back to the question. Far back as May 22nd, the presidential directive requires trucks to leave the road within 72 hours. Mm -hmm. And we have two weeks after 72 hours to move in and remove all that refuse to eat to that directive. The directive expects us to do so many things, which are spelled out in the terms of uh, yes. reference. What mm -hmm. many people grasp is the, is the press statement which is not <coughs> in context and once they see two weeks people just expect to get to a papa and don't see trucks again in two weeks now let me correct an impression a papa port has been there before nigeria's independence in a papa and most of us who use a papa now probably were not born before the port so the port in Apapa also represents, if not second, the third highest uh, revenue generating center okay. in Nigeria. So Apapa is like what the entire Niger Delta is to Nigeria. That's what that small village or small town mm. called Apapa is. That is the port area of Apapa. Now, who are the customers to the port? There will be goods coming from all over the world and goods going out of Nigeria. So they will come in containers and they will be brought there by rail or trucks or by water. So you will expect to see trucks in Apapa. You also expect to see people living in Apapa. We used to have what you call the Europe, um, European quarters when the port was first established. To the right <laughs> of Wharf Road, just before Liverpool Road, used to belong to the port called European quarters. Next where they have their residential houses. Also, when you come into a papa on the bridge, to your right, you see a lot of housing estates there. Mm -hmm. It belongs to port workers. But sometimes in 2006, there was the privatization 
and a lot of the services in our papa was concession for better service. So a lot of things had to give way. So our papa was now given to terminal operators. I mean, the port was given to terminal operator. Some of the, to the right of uh, uh, Wharf Road and to the left of Liverpool was sold out uh, through this monetization. So some issues sprang up. Then the port also expanded to Tinkan Island, where another port was created. So for that purpose of Tinkan Island, the Apapa Ocho, the express road was constructed as a port route to take goods to the port and out of the port through Uruishoki now to Ibado express road. So you have everything that the port needed was made available. So there was also this uh, terminal at uh, Lilipon that was meant for the trucks to park. They call it Lilipon Terminal. It was built, I think, 72 to 74. It was done in the Gowan uh, era. So you also have a, a park created at Ajegunle by the Jakonde government called the Kirikiri Trailer Transit Park. So the port has the, sub, the infrastructure. Then over time, the road started getting bad. Over time, the activities at the port started increasing. Over time, some of these facilities disappeared. The transit park at the Lily Pond was no longer in use. The one at Kirikiri was taken over by uh, spare part sellers up to today. So what are we asked to go to? Then the green lock built up about four years ago. What happened? During the, between 2007 to 2011, mm -hmm. we were battling with tankers mm -hmm. because of the tank farms that sprang up along the Apapo Ocean Express, Tinker end of the Apapo Ocean Express. And uh, you will recall that um, it took the federal government and Lagos government to sit down and fashion out some way out in 2012. So at that 2012, there were about 25 to 30 resolutions of what needed to be done. And Lagos State government, to the best of my knowledge, did almost 95%. That was when in, in the sweep of one or two years, the government built about 22 roads in Apapa, beautiful roads, nice roads, and a lot of things were done in San Apapa. Then the federal government was to construct the Creek Road, the Liverpool Road, and the Apapa Ocho Street, as well as the Wharf Road. As I speak to do, the Wharf Road, has been built, completed. The Creek Road is under construction. A proposal, the Express Road is under construction, even up to Orochoki, and Liverpool Road is under construction. The drainage has even gotten up to like 85% uh, uh, of where the drainage should be. So then another thing that was happen was spot operations. MPA was to improve on the spot operation. The terminal operators are to up the ante. I can tell you that a call-up system has been, uh, is in the process of procurement. That is an electronic call-up system. So what was missing? The roads went bad. The trucks had to go in that bad road, mm -hmm. and there was no good call-up system. So our committee, our team, was given two weeks, and later extended by two weeks. Now, the two weeks for us was to clear the trucks on the road and restore land. What did we do? We moved as far as Antony Village, up to the port, and we removed all the trucks within the two weeks. We removed all the trucks on the roadway. We went into Surulere, we went into Erikmo, and we removed everything that was within the two weeks. We restored And this is how bad it was, because we're talking about the yeah. Apapa, uh, Osho, the Apapa Expressway. So, and you're talking 20. about having to move uh, far back to Surulere. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's why I, 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 I'm taking the time. Yeah. I took the time it, to it, first it, explain. It gives an indication of now, the scale of the problem. Now, so when we took that out, we now went under the bridges from the Marine Beach, where you have the Western Naval Command, up to Costain, we started taking out all the trucks that were parked in those areas and we reduce the kind of menace that is there. Now we introduce a traffic management direction. How trucks should move for different types of truck, for different kinds of businesses and the rest. I'll come to that later. Then we now went to the Apapa. For the first week, we didn't do anything in the Apapa. Sorry, in the mm -hmm. Apapa issue, the Tinkat axis. Okay. The reason being that it's we, what we met on ground was more than what is emphasized. Okay. The roads were bad, the rain was falling, and the way the entire place was ponded. So there was no way you could arrange trucks. Two, the whole place was militarized. You have all sorts of military formations in that axis. The previous tax forces, so many of them, I can count them. That were disbanded, the remnants were still operating. Now, trucks were moving in every direction. Then the neighborhood, Ajegunle, Ajeromi neighborhoods, they've also gotten into the business. 
You see local authorities collecting tickets mm -hmm. from people plying roads they should not ply. Right. You see boys in the area turning themselves into different groups and gangs to collect from this street. You collect from this street. That means we need to use wisdom. So after we have done that for two, we are doing that in two weeks, clear that area, the trucks were removed. No more trucks on Stadium Road, no more trucks on the Cobridge. Bridge, no more. We were able to, do, we now moved in there. The first thing we did was to gain the outbound road. The outbound had been turned to inbound. So everybody was using 10 lane roads to move in, and so many portions of this road were back. Now, to couple with that, I told you, the road is also under contract and construction. The contractor moved in, he couldn't walk. So he started blocking roads for him to walk. That also, you know, definitely you have to allow the contractor to walk. So we have to work with the contractor the second week to get him a corridor of four to six kilometer stretch all the way from the port gate at Coconut down to my two. We secured the three lane for the con so the contractor had piloted that. We now move to the inbound. We took all the trucks all the way from uh, Sunrise out of the road completely. And the contractor desilted the drain. The drain was blocked. Mm. One meter down, one meter wide, blocked. We have to desilt the drain to allow the water to move into the drain. Then we are able to do palliatives on the inbound. That's where the problem is. I mean, it's the inbound that you have to free in, for in, inbound, to inbound, inbound the port. Yes, inbound, in the, that inbound is the port. That's from uh, my yes, two. Yes. Inbound. By the time we did that, the traffic from Sele disappeared. So we now opened that place and allowed them to move forward. And we did the... But however, within that, we asked for two weeks extension. So the vice president visited to see things for himself. And within the next two weeks, at least to make the 30 days, we had moved all trucks. Where did you move them to? Because that's an important question. Yeah. Because the side roads, you know, as, you, as, you, as, you, as you're saying, um, to, just before mile two, the mile two yeah. bridge, and, you know, and well, about a, you, Amu, that way, that, they, they, yeah, for about a mile, thank you, Amu Ward of in particular. Say. They just moved in yeah. there and went and created no, hell. They didn't move in. Let me explain to you. Okay. There have been, that's their... You see, apart Abuju Amuwo and Amuwo Dofin happen to have been designed more as a transit park. I mean, bonded terminal. You know, I was commissioner, I was special advisor in Lagos, and uh, these are issues we had to tackle, tackle at the point. The whole of Alakosu, Abuju Amuwo, First Rainbow, Second Rainbow, all those neighborhoods, that is the right to the express, mm -hmm. moving towards uh, Maitu, go and check it out. They are warehouses for trucks to move container discharge container, do what you call transit, I mean, reloading, transfer, or so many things. We have gone to build houses there. So you now have a no infrastructure upgrade to accommodate the trailer and the resident. So the ones, but that's not the topic of our own committee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. topic of our own committee, when we move trucks out, new ones will come because the port will deal with about 2,500 trucks. Daily. In daily. So the ones that are moving are not the ones you see again. Before, trucks used to stay like okay. a bond. This was the call-up system you were talking about. Talk right. so, so trucks are now coming. And I will tell you why they, are, they, they were coming in and mm -hmm. what we have done to get them out. So I told you, we were asked to develop a traffic management. There was no traffic management in Apapa since uh, November 2015. You know what happened? A last man personnel was stoned to death in Apapa. And last man moved out. Since last man moved out, nobody managed the traffic for almost two years. Then the Navy Took over. came okay. to, to take over. When the Navy came, we started seeing traffic as far back as uh, Osho D, Sele, Isolo. So what we did was, when we moved the ones in front forward by clearing the road, we turned the one-lane road. It was a three-lane road. They were using it as a one-lane road because it was pointed. By the time we desilted, it, it was not clear. So we were able to move more vehicles up. If you look at the video that, is, that we're sending now, up to Vanguard, we have cleared the service lane up to that's Kirikiri. So people going to Kri Kri can have a free movement. So the, all the trucks you are seeing today, some of them are making their 10th trip since that period. They've come, they've gone, they've come, they've come. Now, what we have now done is two things happened to answer that. The, the Lilypond Transit Park was, was mentioned in the operational, um, the presidential directive that MPA should make available the Lilypond Transit Park. So that pass can the take the terminal. terminal. Mm -hmm. So we took over the Lilipon terminal. If you're coming into the port from uh, Ijora End, it's to your right, my total. We call it Marine Beach area. Mm -hmm. So we took over the Lilipon uh, terminal and we moved the con empty container carrying trucks were moved there. 
Okay. So when you move is, that, is that the trailer park A, so called? No, no, no. No, that, that, that's it, different. That's different. Okay. Now we did that. Now on the other side is where you have trailer park. That's the my two think and side. There is a trailer park under construction by the Federal Ministry of Work. They were to release it immediately. It was not released until about three weeks after. We have to move in. It's not yet completed. Mm. So we moved in there. We now put the trucks on the road, I mean, on the road, mm -hmm. into the trailer park. Okay. And we also created, we increased the efficiency of the road in front of the port gate from Coconut to Tinkan Gates 1 and Gate 2. And then introduced a traffic management direction that allows trucks to move easily. Now, what is the good news? The port operations, they are now receiving more trucks and attending to more trucks. Almost double what they used to do, attend to. The wall of Antony, Ikorodu Road, Stadium, Funcho Avenue, Eco Bridge, Ichora Bridge, Marine Bridge, Wharf Road, now free of stationary trucks. That's right. Completely. Mm -hmm. Now, the area that needs additional work is the Maichu Apapa Think and End. Why? The construction of the road is a everything. If you pass through Antony, you will see the contractor working there. If you pass through Oshuri, the contractor is working there. If you get to a solo, the contractor is working there. When you get to a papa, the contractor, the contractor is not even having it easy enough to work in a papa because trucks must go to the port. And if you sniff the port away of trucks, mm -hmm. you sniff Nigeria yeah. away from revenue. Okay. And we go into the session. Mm -hmm. So that's what we meant by saying we have to balance the way all the stakeholders will operate while removing, while resolving the gridlock. So when they say gridlock, I don't see gridlock. Mm -hmm. What I see is resolution of law and order. Okay. That's what we uh, discussed earlier. Mm. Because Apapa has gone beyond the issue of the gridlock of four months, five months, six months, two years, three years, four years ago. The situation had improved. On the Apapa, on the Apapa Wharf side, that is the Eco Bridge, Apapa Wharf, Ijora End, the residents there will tell you that is now passed. So the people that will still complain are the people from Festac, people from Agboju and Amuwo, mm -hmm. who finds it difficult sometimes to come out. That's right. From first remote. The even they even Amuwo, do Yeah, yeah, Amuwo. The reason why they find it difficult because when the trucks keeps to all the lanes, they will have, you know, they are on a straight lane, they will block your access to come out. So what we have done, because the contractor has constricted the, the amount of space, it's just like this, uh, uh, Lagos Ibadan, Express road yes. that uh, is about is, is undergoing. At, at some point in time, you will see diversion. Because of that diversion, from the first rainbow, second rainbow, Fagbem to my two, we said they should use one lane to assess on top of my two bridge. After that bridge, they are not interfacing with many residents anymore, except for those going to Krikiri, Satellite Town, and those going to where you have Vanguard newspaper. For those people, we have kept the service lane completely free for private vehicles, except for tankers. Now, you have tankers. Whenever tankers operate, they don't consume much of traffic anymore. But whenever they need to load at Folawiyo, Navgas, and Lista, which are on the creek road, they will have to pass through a power wharf. So the road will be heavy. You will see what we call congestion, not gridlock. There is difference between congestion and gridlock. What is the what difference? You have on, uh, what is the difference? What you have on third main language is in the morning going to. It's congestion. It's okay, that's like, congestion. Gridlock is when something becomes it's very a, a, difficult a, a, a to build up. A build up. No, gridlock is, you just can't, it's it, it, something that you is just locked down. perennial. Perennial, you can't resolve. Okay. But congestion will come during rush hour when you're on third mainland bridge. And when you are coming out of VR, you won't see it. But those going will see it. It will reverse in the evening. But the good news is that it will go. But when it can no longer go easily, <laughs> it becomes a gridlock. Yeah. So what you have in a papa, seriously speaking, was a gridlock. What you have now is under management. It has gone beyond. It has. It is where you downgrade this Elmino or Sonabi or whatever. It is downgraded now. On the other side, you have what you call congestion. Now, it is different from port congestion. Port congestion is inside the port. The port is not congested. It's not part of my own purview. But the congestion inside the port also affects traffic. Let me retract. Mm. Let me reframe the way I put it. The congestion is not our, it's not one of our mandate. But how does the congestion inside the port affect what is outside? There are so many containers inside our port that are called overtime containers. They have not been removed. 
So when you are bringing your empty container, where is the space? So you need a space to put it. Now they, remove, they need to remove that oversized container. So the federal government and all the stakeholders have agreed that the terminal operators, who are private individuals, not MPA, and people need to understand it, the terminal operators are in a uh, private uh, uh, business entity. They need to, and the person to remove it is the customs. Okay. So they need to remove all this overtime cargo to allow these empty containers to go. Then you ask me, why are these trucks rushing to the port? They are supposed to develop, be, drop their empty container at the holding bay. But guess what? The holding bay belongs to the shipping company. Who is supposed to move the, the container from the holding bay to the port? But who is moving? It's me and you moving it now. Because the shipping company is saying it cannot move it. That it doesn't have access to the port. The, the road is congested in, in the balance. There is a gridlock. Okay. So we have opened it up now. Now, they are also paying them rate. That's why they rush. So if you don't move it within eight days, from the day you took it out of the port, you are going to pay about 20000 for a 40-foot container on a daily basis. So everybody is now rushing to dump that container at the port. So nobody is waiting for a column. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So what we have done is to use the two transit park to introduce a call-up system by our terms of reference. So we now identify 33 places outside of Papa where you can keep 3,000 trucks without disturbing anybody. So apart from moving them to uh, the... How many such places? 33. 33. Uh, I where, think the number is increasing now. Where you can keep up to yes. 300 trucks. Yeah. Dangote 2, which is a manufacturing concern, has also taken some of those parts. Bua has in uh, Abuja Amu. HST has in Abuja Amu. Dangote has in Ogiri. Ikorodu and some in uh, uh, Ijora. So, so many of these big companies. We also made the manufacturing concern. Dangote sugar, Dangote salt, Dangote flour, Dangote refinery, Bua sugar, Bua salt, standard flour beans, crown flour beans, Honeywell, flour beans, Nigeria Limited. They now move at night. So they move between the hours of 12 midnight and 3 a.m. And they are all gone. That's about 300 to 500 trucks. So all the other concerns move during the day. That is what we have put in place to ease this. And the best person to describe the situation is somebody who have seen a papa before yeah, and have seen a papa now. I, I want to appeal to the media. Well, especially the... Well, I understand. The, everybody has to make sacrifices so that we can fix whatever needs to be fixed, depending on... But it's like the residents of Papa really had a raw deal. Too uh, much. So is there a sense that... Are they beginning to get a sense of getting their homes back? People, well, people almost have to... a joke? Yeah, people... Somebody sent a message on their platform two days ago. Where are the trucks? There are no more trucks in Papa. Somebody should bring them back. <laughs> Yeah, so because that is the extent of, extent of the trauma the residents have gone through. They've gone through it for almost four years. They have been almost seeing trucks, seeing um, trucks. In fact, there's a video. Let, let me. There's a video that will give an indication of how different it is from what the Gaussians used to consider a nightmare. Let, let, let me just be quiet. I think the guy is actually running commentary. As you can see, it's good to go free flow. No tanker, no trailer along this corridor. Today be 28th of August 2019. Good flow around the Sipas corridor. We're moving towards a daily port from this point. video it's a cell phone video but at least it's illustrating some of the things that our comrade uh, of is talking about now this this is <laughs> this would have been can move it tight so that we can see the road this would have been tot you see now has climbing the bridge now indeed this is the this is the bridge um this is ijora apapa bridge coming from igomu around national theater the other one you see on the left is coming from a uh, Loma end, that is the water corporation end. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Jora 7 up. Mm -hmm. um, as the guy climbs now to your right, will be the Lily Pond terminal. Okay. The, we may not so see it in this. This, this, this would have been, you couldn't have seen this video. First of all, explaining again that this is a cell phone video, <laughs> as you can it's amateur video, um, but it's, it's, it's doing its work. It is giving us 
a view of what we've been talking about, and um, it's unbelievable. And the person too is driving. Not in, in, not indeed. Are you now? Are you are you therefore saying because the the number of issues um and you you really like this is the upper power work road side. There are two sides. The people on the other side that is the upper part of the express road. Mm -hmm. It's not as smooth as this. I don't know if we'll see that video too. There's another see, video, this, and yeah, that's that the... is total. You see, on the right side, you mm -hmm. see the tank farm. Mm -hmm. That is the total tank farm. And just before then, you where you have the the trailer transit park. So when the trailer comes from the nominated park, what we have done is that you will you will get a call up from MPA to come and drop your container. So you go to the nominated park where you stay. Then from the nominated park, you are calling to that park. From that park, you are calling to the port. So that removes, they will be on the road at some point, but not like stationary on the road. They will move somewhere here, they will descend, and then make a U-turn to go into that uh, trailer park. I, I believe there's a, similar, and, there's a similar amateur video about and, the... And in the morning, this mm -hmm. is between seven, this is between six and 10 a.m. Only the tankers will be moving. When it gets to like, uh, uh, beyond this point, but when it gets to like 10 a.m., they start releasing them from, uh, from the transit park. Then they go to the port. And you will not see them stationary anywhere except the port. It's not receiving. That's the only time. Now, seen. this is a different uh, okay, this is the, uh, amateur video. It's a cell phone video. This is video. the second part. So this is now going to where you will not see the truck. So we have cleared up. This is uh, Point Road. They are coming from Point Road. Mm -hmm. You are now going on to your left. You see that's Flower Mills, mm -hmm. Nigerian Limited. Now, the guy is going. When he gets to where you call Eleganza, where the road will now move the last 100 meters to the port, you start seeing the trucks queue to enter the port. So we've been able to streamline the way they are released to enter the port, contain them in the 33 nominated park and in the transit park. And uh, some of them do have express movage, like the military. They will have uh, express movage, like the, um, we call them Arewa, those um, Bumburu, those ones are big things. They will have express uh, movement or any truck that is on essential. Now you are getting close to, now you started seeing them to the left. So they maintain a lane from here to assess the port. So the port will pick them one after the other. And don't forget, the port is a border post. It's like going to the airport. We will kill before we enter the security zone. So they are bound to kill. Now you will see, that's Eleganza ahead of you. They will now, the, the flatbeds will make a left to Eleganza. The container carrying ones will make a right. They are not the container carrying ones you don't get to this road. But because the Apapo should the express road is under construction, Liverpool Road is stopped. Now you are now approaching the port. This is 100 meters to the port. Mm -hmm. that everything here is about port. So they are not disturbing the residents. So they now stay on the left. The car is still moving. Before you won't see this. This, this was not possible before. Yeah. That's still a moving car there. Would you now say that um, mission accomplished? No. Because no. Yeah, because there, no. there, 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 there's, there, much has been achieved, but there's a heck of a lot more to be done. Let me tell you the truth. We are expected not to stay more than 30 days. This is about the 10th month. And the, the reason be, is this. Because all, because the all this started on the, well, we, we, we heard of the, of the directive now, May the 22nd. Is Here the we plan, are in August. There is an holistic plan by the federal government under PEBEC, Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council, where you have the vice president as the chairman and for which the president has appointed a special advisor who is the secretary to the council. Now, what that public has done is to do an holistic solution to the APAPA issue. Okay. That issue is the real. I am proud to inform you. There is also a video that is available showing how the rail is moving empty containers and export from a booty metal to the port. There is now a construction going on from Lily Pond Transit Truck Terminal to inside the port for a rail track. Also, people are now moving containers by badges from my two and from a Kurudu end into the port. Then there is also uh, um, the reconstruction of these roads, and there are so many other things. Dry seaport in the Kaduna, another one in Niger, another one going on in Ibadan. These are all part of Then the MPA, hopefully by the end of this year, will introduce the electronic call-up system. And these are holistic. So our own job, that is where we got misinterpreted. When we say it's to create an enabling environment, to create an enabling environment for the final resolution to be in place. 
you have to restore law and order, introduce a manual call up system, pending electronic call up system. You have to remove all stationary trucks. You have to ensure people queue according to movement. Okay. And you also have to ensure that the port operation is not affected. Now, this is a comprehensive... Thank you very much. This is a comprehensive and kind of situation. Video on what we've got to do... My two we'll, we'll, we'll get to it. We'll, we'll go on a break now, but I'm, I'm, I'm sure there must be a lot of questions uh, from all over the place. Maybe some from abroad. Maybe, maybe some from the residents in the area and then workers in the area uh, about how things have changed. Stay with us, please. We'll be right back and we'll, we'll take your calls, of course. We're talking about maybe we'll get another movie, I mean, another, you know, a cell phone video, um, such as it is, showing, you know, mile, from mi mile two, as it were, into the world. But first of all, you know, if you're just joining us, we have Comrade uh, Kaude Okpaifa, who is Executive Vice Chairman of the Presidential Task Team, headed by uh, Vice President Yemi Oshibajo. It's on the restoration of law and order in Apapa. What used to be called a papa gridlock, but uh, <laughs> he, he, he has he explained that that let's be careful with our words. <laughs> that it's all about restoration of law and order, which itself is no small feat. Law restoring law and order, because as you said, just about every law enforcement agency was involved in there. And uh, uh, before you know, you guys came around. Now I remember that when the uh, I have the actual report in front of me. This goes back to. Uh, 22nd of May, then when uh, Mr. Lao Lua Kondi, uh, Senior Special Assistant to, you know, uh, the Vice President, when he released this, and um, he was saying, and I quote directly, LASMA has been authorized to move into a papa as the lead traffic management agency, while MPA is to commence the immediate use of Lilipon Terminal and Trailer Park A as Truck Transit Park. Uh, I don't know if that was achieved. Yeah. Um on the last man leading in as the is referring oh, oh. to the Tinkan Transit yeah. Drop Park. Yeah. We, we got that in place after uh, three weeks, and then Lilipon was immediate. There were two transit parks. But on the issue of last man, when we came in, we, we, we have worked with last man like two weeks before the presidential announcement. We have collectively strategized, but on getting to the ground, we discovered last man was it's no longer as one would expect. They were actually not in Apapa. Because, because I, the left, were, I, I was going to ask whether they were, they were overwhelmed. To, you just don't just see that. Be, but, um, it's like they've but, lived, but, left that. But let me say all that we have achieved, mm -hmm. we have done with last month, FRSC and the select police team. But um, going forward, most of the clearing we're doing in recent time has been done by last month. We have had discussion with Lagos State Government, the Minister of Transportation and the Governor, and the Governor is uh, um, working seriously on uh, getting last month to the status uh, last man used to be until uh, there was a, um, a an incident. attack mm. on that uh, last man personnel about uh, four four years ago in Apapa. After the which last man last virtually man withdrew. But, uh, let me say the last man remains um, the best thing to happen to public <laughs> sector in Nigeria in the last 20 years. I'm saying the creation of public transport man. sector. You know, I would say the public sector. Public sector, yeah. totally. Every other new agencies you have seen in the area of security law and other are taken after LASMA. And uh, with LASMA being the lead agency, it's not, it's not just that, it's also constitutional. Because traffic management is the responsibility of the state. Mm. So we, that is why we have stayed longer than expected. Agencies like LASMA, the Nigerian Post Authority, um, the, um, the police and the rest are supposed to take over and carry out the sustainability. Mm. And the sustainability of this work will inch more on the LASMA and the Lagos State Government as well as the federal government. So for me, LASMA is doing its best in this regard, and uh, uh, very soon um, you will see a new LASMA which is dedicated to a papa, courtesy of the current uh, now, administration. Um, okay, uh, co co coupled with that, I wanted to ask if um, 
um, the part of the directive that mandates uh, or mandated compliance by all security personnel and MDAs. <laughs> How well that went. But before I go there, uh, Joshua in Irewale Ogun State has called in. Good morning, Josh. Okay. Good morning, Uncle Yori. Good morning, sir. I greet uh, Comrade of Pfeiffer. Good morning, sir. I want to commend him uh, and his team. I think uh, they are delivering on the mandate they have been given, and that is good. I would say, uh, just like speaking to the situation of Nigeria, this, uh, their task force is what is needed across the country. But let's say, a papa as it is happening now, we are seeing results that when government is sincere, things can be done, and they can be done in order. Uh, I will say, I don't know how much uh, of the working of government uh, in the past. But to me, I think this is the first time that we have seen a government that is directly confronting a problem and not playing politics with it. This should be sustained across the nation. We need sincerity instead of people pretending. You know, when you have somewhere as strategic as port, and for two years there was a gridlock, a total madness, chaos in the place, and nobody cared. You know, what they are doing now is telling us that we have problems that we made for ourselves, mm -hmm. man-made problems, mm -hmm. you know, but if our government that is in charge of law and order, in charge of enforcing it, if they are working, the system will work. I commend his team, and I want to use him to speak to the government that their task force should not be disbanded hurriedly <laughs> until the major uh, project of restoring a papa is, in, is put in place so that they can midwife what is going on now. And the uh, project, when it takes over, Everything will work seamlessly. Mm -hmm. So I just want to commend him and the present government for their effort at tackling that problem. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for calling in, Joshua. Yes, the, the, the matter about the directive, you know, mandating other people to comply, especially security personnel. Now, we know it's unfortunate at this stage of our development when you have a situation such as we had in there, uh, people, it, it, it was just a gold mine. I, I'm, 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 I don't know any, way to, any other way to put it for rascally, you know, <laughs> let me just put it that way, <laughs> rascally um, agency, security agencies. So not everybody was on board with your efforts. No, not everybody actually was happy that this problem, uh, these people might actually be able to crack it. Um, how much of a problem was that? Because I know from personal experience, you, you people couldn't be there throughout 24 hours, that there will be a time officialdom had to withdraw to tomorrow and then it, the, the, the streets, the roads, the confusion would belong to someone else, and then they'd have their own order. Let me, let me, I'll be blunt, and I'll be, at the same time, be cautious. The cooperation has not been total. That's a fact. But we were able to forge ahead because of the selection. We have a special police team, headed by a commissioner of police rank. Okay. That is Akimo Dumoso. Mm -hmm who was former tax force chairman in Lagos, former commandant RRS, and former assistant commissioner of police at the port, heading the enforcement team. We have uh, Super Bayo Sulaiman, who was former chairman tax force in Lagos, who is currently the squadron commander at the uh, Mopul 40 mm -hmm. in Taraba, mm -hmm. drafted onto this job. Okay. You have FRSC present, you, you have the Last man, Lagos State Government strengthened by the Commission of Transport, PAMSEC Transport, and the Director of Operation, LASMA, and the General Manager, LASCO. So, on the part of the customs, the customs are still on the road. I will say that. Okay, can I, can I just interrupt there for a moment, and you please you resume after uh, where you got to customs, because Tunde Inekeja has been holding on for a while. Okay, uh, good morning, Tunde. Hello, good morning. Thank you for Hello. calling in. Thank you for Thank calling you in. Thank you very much. Yes. It's a privilege to to call you for the first time. We're delighted to have you. Thank you very much um, for calling. Yes. 
I want to commend Mr. Okofa. Uh, I, I, I know that he can carry out the exercise, and I'm not surprised. Now, um, it's one thing to, to bring sanity to, to the port. Mm -hmm. It's another thing to sustain the sanity. I had the privilege to, uh, of visiting uh, Badger um, uh, what is it Port on Saturday. Okay. And it seems the trailers were back. And I was, I was asking myself, what, what is actually happening? I think, but for me, in my own considered opinion is that we, we are just a, a bunch of knowledge people. As far as, I'm sorry to use the word. For God's sake, let, let the, either the government will, will confiscate the those vehicles that, that run foul of the law and or will impose very heavy fines on them. Otherwise, the, the situation will go back to what it, 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 it used to be. Okay. Uh, there's a limit to, to the government to put a task force permanently with the, um, for, uh, you know, fighting a cause. Mm -hmm. we, we just must develop the, this, this mentality of obeying simple instructions. All right, then. I thank you for giving me the opportunity and, uh, and good morning. Thank you, Twende, and uh, great to have you on board. Um, would you like to comment on his yeah, I, observations I, 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 about Badger, the Badger? No, I, I know where he's talking about. Mm. I also gave a picture. You see, what you see in Badger is not total confusion. It's because of the construction ahead. So the trailers, the trucks, are restricted from moving forward anytime the contractor is working in that. So they move slowly. But the problem will soon be completely out of the way. Give me another one way. It was cleared before mm -hmm. to zero. And we have to, they have to come back because when people saw that the road was clear, everybody now started leaving where they were before to come out. So what you see is like uh, uh, <laughs> you have 1,000 trucks passing in the day and they sent the message out the road. It's, I took, it took me two days to get my things out. Then the rest started. It is a mad rush to return the containers. So as soon as there's something that is going to happen on the issue of this empty container return, policy which the government is well. as soon as government makes that to happen there will not be that much mad rush okay and, uh, let me just let, let, on terms of cooperation uh, w one second please uh, because i knew this was going to happen yeah, no. calls upon calls now femi is calling in from Sue Lira. good morning femi uh, good morning Gregory. thank you for calling in yeah what we are having in those areas is just uh, logistic management management that's what we are having in that way then you see this thing that happened before when Patina was there and it was solved easily. When most of those stuff that are there, they are there part, they, part, they don't have any business being there. And in our special union, before when Patina was there, we used to tell them, they are to give When you have your call up, you get your card, then you call your driver, the driver will go in. The second part is that they get that road so bad. So, which you have done the policy, the policy issue, if they can solve the policy issue of that rule, then they make sure, because when person was there, he insisted that all the, all the, all the sand farms must have power, and they, they comply. When you have a pay for 30 trucks, you don't call more than 30 trucks. When you have a pay for 100 trucks, you don't call for more than 100 trucks. Anybody that, anybody that stays on that road, we just do that. Then automatically it should be fine. You are being fine on that time. Without that one, most of most of those jobs there, yeah, they come there, they pass looking for customers. Customers. I don't know much about the, the port aspect of it, but from most what I know, it is just uh, logistic management in discipline, even to the port. Because most of them, you know you can take this shop. Look at it, Guru Lady. From you know, from uh, Ojolaba down to Lego. That's what they pack there. He has his pack in so great. He knows how many they are going to load for his own yard. And he knows how many trucks he's going to load. Why do they have to come and pack on the highway? All right, then. Thank you. I get you, then. Thank you very much, Femi. L let me just say, Mr. Femi, uh, I agree with you and I thank you for your comment. We have gone beyond the past that stage. We don't have all those issues again. I was the Commissioner for Transportation. Yeah, you are right. Yeah, we are doing the same thing now. So I don't think you see trucks parked on your road in Suleri anymore. So we have gone beyond that stage. Mm -hmm. That logistics issue is being addressed 
with the traffic mm -hmm. management direction mm -hmm. and a plan. Mm -hmm. okay. So, and okay. when you see trucks going to the port, it's not also always correct to assume they have no business in it. Anybody carrying an empty container has a business. If he doesn't drop that container, he pays 20,000 naira. It, it does no business. So we need to address the issue of the empty container return handling issue, which is a port issue. Okay. We need to resolve that issue. We need to resolve the issue of the overtime containers mm. in the port that is preventing the shipping companies from returning the empty container. But for what he addressed, seriously speaking, we have gone beyond that stage. Is correct? Okay. Ma Mazi Okora for Enaro Chuku. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. sir. Good comrade. In charge, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. You see, sir, delay in restoration of our Papa Port Road, to me, the job should be at least, let's keep it 247, non-stop. Why am I making that statement? Because if you see people on that, who, the residents, complaining on television every day, 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 you start wondering, does it mean there's no other uh, uh, alternative? Mm -hmm. Now, to me, I would suggest, if you can just you know, let's take it this way, that the Nigerian government should shield base to Calabas Seaport. Not only Calabas, but Port Harcourt Seaport, too. I think some of those things, uh, those ships are not there. Let them divide them to that, to those areas. Because Calabas Seaport, all the facilities are there, but they are just doing nothing. If you look, if you go to Calabas, you see that Seaport is there, can accommodate at least one quarter of what is happening in Apaparada. But it's, it's left empty. You go to uh, Port Harcourt, it's empty. So why is it the influx of all this gridlock we are having in Apapa? It's, it's, it's a terrible situation. Because Nigeria, we have an alternative. Why is the federal government delaying making use of all those this support? I would like to hear from you, sir. All Thank right, you then. very much. Have a blessed day. Thank you very the much, the, the That idea, I'm sure. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't work for the public. I can speak mm. on this issue. Just mm. about last week or so, the House of National Assembly, the House of Reps, had a public hearing on these uh, 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 eastern ports. And I, I'm also aware that throughout last week, the entire board of MP were on the tour of the Eastern Port. There are more complex issues. It has been addressed by custom, uh, licensed customs uh, agent. Um, there are, you don't want to transfer, pro you need to solve problem. The APAPA issue is not unsolvable. And for, for just with due respect, all the concern he has, go and ask the resident. They will tell you the problem is not there. Has before again, mm. so we shouldn't be running away How from. How about problem. the sustainability that other people that people yeah. are now mentioning? Say it's all right for now, but you know how it is in Nigeria. Uh, I beg to disagree with you. How is it in Nigeria? I have lived abroad also. With due respect, we are human beings. I just send the message. I know. I'm as, I know I'm as, feel, patri I I'm as patriotic as the next yeah. guy, I, but unfortunately, rest, no. our people behave differently. No, when they go to where no, you I have agree, lived for so long, I, I just, I just, and when they come back home. I responded to a, res, a, a resident today who told me, I hope this will continue. Uh -huh. And I said, it will if you own it. Okay. And I own it. Okay. So if every, and that is the design. I told you there is a, an holistic plan by Pebek. And that's to address but, 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 Mazi also. There is an holistic plan to dredge on air and all this okay. stamp so that they can receive bigger vessels. There is an holistic plan to increase the security situation around those spots. And there's also an holistic plan to address the empty container return policy. As it's just a tiny less than 1% of the entire thing that is going on or mm. that is about mm. Mm. to happen. The man talking about logistics, it is talking of the call-up system and the way the port manages people assessing the port and all these things. That is also a procurement about to be concluded. So all these issues are known. However, I'm not saying it's Uru. Mm -hmm. The sustainability is key. Last man, last man must be ready and better positioned to manage the traffic. Lagos State Government must take full ownership of whatever goes on. That because if anything goes wrong, it is the residents of Lagos. If anything goes wrong from the port to come and affect the way it is the residents of Lagos that will suffer. It. And the government of Lagos is doing that now. Okay. I can inform you, Loma has moved in to clean up a papa. I can inform you, Lagos State Security Corps has also moved in to take over all the empty spaces. I can inform you that last pack, you know, it was done, the last pack has also moved in last week. They are now enumerating to regenerate the area. So beyond traffic, mm. there is a need to regenerate, and Lagos State Government has taken up that challenge. Now, the Port Authority is to manage the issue of port collapse 
her port operation, and the port is also doing and the same thing. And you know, thing. we were talking so about that. So seriously and, speaking. And, and you were saying that, you, on that line, you were saying that, well, unfortunately, cooperation wasn't total. Total, yeah. Uh, and that's where I'm And even in the whole call-up business, but, the, but, but we've now, heard talk but about, now, even that, there's room for corruption in there. Yeah, uh, you know, I stayed away from you this. Did. You did. Know, one of the major problems and the consequences of that deal was the 65 million Naira economy daily. That people are exchanging money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With that, it's one of our terms of reference. We have brought it down. Ik is on the line uh, from um, Igomo, Ikotun. Good morning, uh, Ik. Uh, DK, DK from Ikotun. Good morning, sir. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I want to make a contribution from what you are saying. Sure. Because, uh, you are sure, sir. Yeah. Um, you see, we are just Nigerians. We are just deceiving ourselves. How is that? Yes, because I say in the sense that we have many ports around it, uh, within, uh, within. Other countries, when, when you check, as, as about five, six years ago, there was nothing like congestion, uh, congestion at the port. But right now, why is this so? Why is this, is a pro why is this problem that, that cannot be solved? There no, 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 no. I don't know. Sorry, we, he, he's, uh, this question was asked maybe by uh, uh, Mazi. Uh, this point was made by Mazi Okorafo, uh, calling in from Arochuku. And um, uh, Comrade Okwefa has said that the problem in, you know, that we're talking about is, yeah. not, is not impossible of, uh, of being solved. He's been solved already. Okay. Yes, sir. So, what I'm trying to say that. Why I said we are deceiving ourselves that this is a very simple something. The government is supposed to have not. And moreover, whatever we are saying, just like what we are saying right now, yeah. government, they are not taking notice of what the public, has, the contributions of the public, okay. for them to know how they can sort out this problem. At, at the end of it all, this problem continues. Okay. All right. If you say so, I, I, are you are, are you saying that um, what suggestions from the public? Uh, what do you mean that? They're not listening to the public. Yes, like all the contributions that they have made all the time. Like what we are, that I so much like your, I, must, I so much like your program. Your pro, Thank I you, so sir. Much like your program. Thank and you. the government, the government is supposed to have listened to Okay, media. okay, okay. I get what you uh -huh. Listen to this media, <coughs> people's opinion. They okay. can now work on it. Okay. But the problem that they are not listening to people's opinion. Okay. At, at, at the end of it all, the, the problem is that they do whatever they like. Mm -hmm. That is the problem we are having in this country. All right, then. Well, thank you very much for calling in, DK. Really appreciate your call. Let me, let me, let me take something that DK, that DK said. Um, well, he says the government is not listening. Well, well, maybe, I don't know where he got that impression from, but I know that it's not all the time we've been wanting to get you, sir, that we've been able to get you. You've been a very scarce commodity. I'm but busy on the road. You, you're you're solving, busy on the road. The uh, problems, all, the, all that time we're not getting information. People are saying this no, government let, let, let is not listening this. because let we don't know this. what's going on. If you read the presidential directive, sure. it says series of meetings have been held mm. with stakeholders. I'm privy to have attended about six. Mm -hmm. With the likes, all the port people, people who work, Ankla, Nagaf, custom license agents, yeah, yeah, shipping yeah. council, mm -hmm. um, residents, um, come to our driver, or okay. driver owners, all, fleet, all of them, we've, they've made submissions. Okay, now, so the now, issue is, and I told you that we've, there we've is a holistic... Of, we've run out of time. You've emphasized this, that it's a, it's a, a, a holistic, holistic approach. Is approach being, and we are just 1% of that okay. now, issue. The rest are going Much on. has been achieved, I think, will be your position. But there's a heck of a lot more to do. I agree with you. Okay. But let me just say this to the public. I, I believe we Very need, briefly, to, please, we need to trust our government that we voted for. And uh, we don't need to start going to issues of problems cannot be solved. Then we shift. This government is there to solve problems. And any problem and any contribution from the public is valuable. And that is what this government will do to solve any issues that has come up. And the APAPA issue, as far as it has to do with traffic management issue, is undergoing resolution for now. And the Lagos State Government is ready. The Shippers Council is ready. The Port Authority is ready. Okay. And the Office of the Vice President, Pebek, is position to handle it. I think we, we, we can, it's a fine place to leave it. And thank you very much, Comrade Kaade Okwefa, um, Executive Vice Chair, Presidential Task Team on uh, Restoration of Order, Law and Order uh, in that whole axis. Thank you very much. It's been very illuminating. And um, congratulations on what you've achieved. OK, so that's our program today. Please join us tomorrow for a fresh edition. I am Yori Polarin. Do have a great day.